So for this question, Mia's asked me to do a video response to one of her, um, one of the questions that she wasn't able to get in a test or a practice resource. A normal message to my teacher and my uh, attempted working out in the photo was just trying to see where it would take me. Would I be able to get a walkthrough video response to solve these sorts of questions? We've gone through transformations, but I don't think our teacher went through this type of question where the equation of the graph isn't given, such harder to find and the transformations are asked in f of x form. Sorry if it's a stupid question. First of all, Mia, no stupid questions, and I appreciate your contribution to the forum and um, all the comments that you've been leaving as well. doesn't go unnoticed, so thank you very much, Mia. Um, and I've copied this question over to the uh, whiteboard, and I'm going to uh, go through exactly how to do it. I'm going to just do one part of each question because the, the process for doing them is very similar. It's just a matter of knowing um, how transformations are, are kind of represented in functional format. And I talked about this with one of the other questions from the forum. So I'm just going to take this um, here and I'm just going to paste it just so we can go through it. But what we can see is that each of our transformations are ref represented in a functional way like this. So a common one, if we just look at the first one, reflection in the x-axis, what happens is that there's a negative outside of our whole function rule. But if we have a reflection in the y-axis, what happens is that we just replace the x with negative x inside of our function. So there's different ways of representing all of these um, all these transformations in functional format. And that's what we, this question is calling for as well. So what this question is suggesting is that this is a function, obviously, and is represented by f of x. And based on this notation here, we should be able to know how our function is being transformed. So what I'm going to say first off is that if we have a two outside, we can go through our table and see if we have a constant on the outside, what that actually means in terms of um, our mapping or our transformation. And then we should be able to also figure out how that affects our shape. So if we have a dilation by factor of b from the x-axis, that's represented by that factor outside of our f of x. So what we can say is that if we have a 2 outside of our f of x, our graph is being dilated by a factor of 2 from the x-axis, and we should know, or like this is what the, the trick is, I assume. Though like this is what's tricky, I mean. If we have a 2, how's that represented on a graph? So how is dilation by a factor of 2 from the x-axis represented on our graph here? So what I like to do is I like to do each of these kind of step by step. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do, well, obviously f of x is given, and then we're going to sketch 2 f of x as a dotted line, and then we're going to do 2 f of x minus 5. So we'll do it step by step. So the first one here, 2 f of x, that's a dilation by a factor of 2 from the x-axis, um, as we saw from the table. So how does that actually affect our graph? What happens is that every y value is multiplied by 2. So it's essentially just stretching the graph like this in the y direction or from the x-axis as our notation suggests. So what's going to happen is that this branch, just do it branch by branch. This branch is going to be stretched like that. This y value here, this is like a key point here, that's going to um, double because again, multiply by two. So it's going to be like that. And then this here, it's going to go back to the um, x-intercept because the y value is zero at the x-intercept. So that's actually not going to change. And then it's going to go back up like that. And you can see that each of my y values is just multiplied by 2 from the previous value. So this is going to be 2 f of x. This is 2 f of x here. Then we have 2 f of x minus 5. So how does the minus 5 affect our um, graph? Or what transformation does it represent? We see f of x minus h is here, and that's a translation denoted by h. So actually, when we minus values from inside our function from the x, that actually translates things to the right. So if we have minus 5, in this case, what it's actually doing is it's shifting our whole graph to the right. It's not necessarily changing our shape at all. It's literally just shifting the same shape to the right by five units. So right now we have intercepts at negative five and negative one. So that, that negative five is going to move to zero. That negative one is going to move to four. And then you can see that we follow the same shape as the blue. So I can literally just copy and paste this if I wanted to. I just, oh, and I can't because it's all separate shape. That's okay. But I can just literally just trace the exactly the same shape. And that's what the solution, that's the solution that your teacher has, obviously, like that. So that's how we actually get our final answer. That's how I would do it, though. I'll do it step by step because it makes things a lot easier. And just make sure that you do it in the right order as well. Most of the time, the common order that people do is dilation, reflections, translations. So just make sure you do it in those orders as well. Let's do this. And... Hopefully after that explanation, part B and part C become a lot easier as well. Let's do this one now. This one's actually very hard. So we have this weird 
uh, shape here. It's not very, um, it's not very good. It doesn't really look like a sign or a cos because the peaks aren't at the same, or the the troughs there aren't at the same height. But that's okay. We'll do our best with what we have in front of us. So we have two f of two x minus four plus one. Remember to factorize first. I was about to say this, but they actually remind us here. So what it means by re remember to factorize first is that in the inside of our function, it should be written as 2f of 2 outside of x minus 2 plus 1 on the outside. And the reason why you need to do that is because if you follow the order dilation, reflection, and then translation, then you want to apply your dilation from the x-axis first, and then you apply your translation after that. So that's actually a really important note that you have to make. It's that a lot of people would read this straight away and think, oh, we have a translation of four units to the right. But we actually don't because you need to factorize first if we follow the order DRT, dilation, reflection, translation. And you'll see after factorizing that we have a translation of two units to the right. So what we have here is a dilation by a factor of two from the x-axis. And then we have a dilation by a factor of half from the y-axis. And that's actually really hard to do in one go. But what this two does here is if we sketch two f of x, it's going to stretch it the same. As before, just stretches it horizontally like that. But then if we have a dilation by factor of one half from the y-axis, what that's going to do is it's going to, if we look at our, oh, where's our table? Our table's here. If we look at what happens here, our x is just multiplied as well, which is stretching it away from the y-axis as well, uh, away from the y-axis or in the x direction as well. So we're stretching in the y and we're also stretching in the x as well. Um, but keep in mind that the general way of representing this is as x over a. So this is actually not a dilation by factor of two from the y-axis. It's actually a dilation by factor of one half from the y-axis because we actually flip the, the y dilation. And if you look at our table, it, rep it represents it in the same way because if we have a dilation by factor of a from the y-axis, that becomes x on a. So for example, if we had this as two, that would become a dilation by factor of two from the y-axis. But in this case, we have f of two x, blah, 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 something else, it doesn't matter. Let's just isolate the two x. This is actually a dilation by a factor of one half from the y-axis. So we just have to keep that in mind. So we're stretching vertically like that from the two on the outside, but then the two on the inside is actually shrinking our graph like that. So if we apply them both at the same time, which is kind of complicated, it'll look something like this. Um, so let me think about this for a sec. This is actually pretty hard. I think once I draw the shape, it should make a lot more sense. Yes. Yeah, cool. So as you can see, we've shrunk everything this way, but also we've stretched it that way as well. So every, every value is doubled in the Y direction, but in the X direction, every value has halved. And then after that, it's actually not too hard. We just apply our translation, which is shifting two to the right. And then we also have plus one on the outside. If you look at the plus one or plus a value on the outside, if you move that across, that's just going to become plus K. So you can see the K is translating it upwards by one unit. It's not the sign change like the X value has. So what this is going to mean is that we shift again, two to the right, one upwards. So everything is just going to be uh, like this. Uh, two to the right, one upwards would be roughly like this. I don't have to get it too exact because I'm not being marked on this, but it should be something like this. Yeah, cool. Something like that, whatever. But hopefully you get the gist of what's actually going on. If you split up, if you split up your notation into steps, so focus on the dilations first and then the reflections and the translations, it's going to make your job a lot easier.